us start with Boris. If you can unmute yourself and go ahead and slit your name and outlet. Um, Boris Coltier, Meldorville. Hello, Stefan. Which were your sources of inspiration to create your character? What did you bring to this character to give him a real human death? And what do you have in common with him? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, you know, my first inclination of, of, of you know, sort of dive, diving into, you know, this world of, of veterans getting reacclimated to civilian life, I knew I had to, you know, obviously connect with veterans. Um, you know, that was a good starting point for me. So I was able to, to talk to some, you know, some veterans who were my age, some even younger, um, get to hear testimony to them, um, you know, not so much about their experiences overseas, but more so, you know, their experience sort of reacclimating uh, into, into civilian life and sort of the challenges um, that present themselves, you know, when, when going about that. So I knew that first I had to start there um, and that everything else would, would, would sort of come after it. Uh, for me in the second season, I got to do a lot more of, of you know, building the humanity um, and showing people the man, uh, you know, behind the soldier from season one. Okay, great. Next up is Amandine. If you could please slate your name and outlet and then ask your question. Hi, uh, I'm Amandine from France. I work for seriously.com. Um, can you tell us what we can expect for Walter in this season two? Like, what state of mind is he at the beginning and what, what can happen to him? Yeah, so I think, if, you know, if you remember that first season, um, you know, anybody who was a fan of that first season sort of experienced uh, a young man uh, who was effectively being drained of his memory every single day. Uh, you know, this season, for me, I got to stray away from that naivete, that aloofness, um, you know, that sort of vulnerability uh, that just had to be accepted from Walter in that first season. Um, you know, we kind of flipped that on its head. And, and for me, this season was particularly rewarding uh, because Walter has a whole new mission. He has a dogged uh, determination um, to, to, you know, not only figure out what happened to him in that first season, but to, to, to right the wrongs, if you will, uh, you know, to, to, to gain some sort of vengeance. And so for me, that was always exciting going into the second season. All right, next is Lorenzo, if you wanna ask your question, please. Hello, Lorenzo from Donna Moderna, Italy. Um, when you were talking about uh, preparing for the role, whenever you prepare for a role, do you enjoy that part of the process as much as filming? Um, I think every, every project is definitely subjective. Um, everything, you know, is different depending on the, on the role and the character. Um, but often, you know, that sort of level of prep, uh, you know, is, it's just a, it's a necessity in terms of preparing for your, your, your characters. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of figure that I can't go into filming without doing some background work and, and, and understanding who it is that I'm playing. You know, I often lean into uh, truth and authenticity. And while I wouldn't call myself a method actor per se, I think that, um, you know, a lot of what I do is informed by real life. Um, you know, I try to live in the truth. I think that's our job as artists to be able to uncover and, and, and correctly um, convey the truth. Okay, great. Next is Jonita, please. Hi, I'm Jonita from the Black Cape. Um, I, I want to talk about Walter. He, um, he, he seems to be a good guy and then there's this moment later in, the, in season two where we really sort of question that can can you talk about um walter and you know is he really this good guy or is he is does is there something dark that we need to the audience needs to prepare for um hmm that's a that's a slippery slope for me i, I would say that um i would say that no one's 100% good and no one's 100% evil. Um, I would say that 
a lot of what we see in the second season is a direct result of sort of some of the things that Walter has had to deal with um, in the first season. And, uh, and so, you know, some of his ways, some of his methods might in turn be justified. So I guess it all depends on, on you know, what, what seat you're, you're looking at this from, um, you know, whose side you are, you're on in the whole thing. Thank you. All right, next is Ravi. Yeah, hi, Stefan. Hey there. Yeah, so uh, my question Ravi, to you is- Please slate your name and outlet before you ask your question. Yeah, this is Ravi uh, from PTI, India. So uh, my question to you is that, you know, uh, Julia Roberts, Heidi was a cornerstone of Walter in season one. You know, so how difficult it was for you to move forward without her in second season? I mean, I could barely make it to set without Julia. It was horrible. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, but no, I, I mean, look, Homecoming that that first season was obviously incredible. Um, I'm very fortunate to be able to share um, the screen, share share my scenes with the great Julia Roberts. Um, but you know, for me, this season just felt like its own thing. It just felt like a new thing. Um, I tried not to compare it to that first season too much. Um, you know, though they're connected, they, they sort of feel like they're their own separate world. And that's a big credit to our director, um, Kyle Patrick Alvarez, who did a great job of taking this season. And, and, and uh, you know, it could be a daunting task for any new director to take on a show that already exists and already has a fan base and, um, and things of those nature. But, you know, I think he really took it on fearlessly and he was able to, uh, you know, give us a whole new world that was different, but but equal in richness to that of the one uh, Sam Eshmael built in the first season. So for me, it was just great. I mean, I just, you know, I had great partners in the in the first season and Julia and, and Sam, and that really didn't change uh, with, with Janelle Monet and Kyle Patrick Alvarez this season. Okay, great. So... We have time left for everyone to ask a second question if you'd like. I'll start with Boris. Do you have a second question? If you want to unmute yourself and say your name. Yes, um, Boris Coltier. Please, what is your favorite scene, scene sorry, in this second season? Thank you. Say that one more time, Boris. Yes, sorry. What's your favorite scene in this second season? Thank you. Got it. Uh, my favorite scene in the second season uh, would probably be this this long walk and talk that that um, that uh, Walter um, and Janelle's character go through in uh, in a forest, and and it's sort of this long walk and talk in in one shot um, that leads to to sort of an explosion, if you will, um, you know, without giving too much away. Uh, but I just remember the the you know. The prospects of that day and 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 uh you know realizing that we were filming that scene on a steady cam um you know so there's one camera guy basically holding up this this significantly heavy piece of camera equipment um and he has to do this backwards walk through a woods while janelle and i just talk um and 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 so i just remember you know janelle and i really really trying to make it as easy as possible you know for the for the camera guy uh, to be able to pull pull it off, and so you know that that required a different level of attention to detail, um, you know, for me and and Janelle and intensity all in that moment. And so uh, I don't know, it was just a a moment of of respect for me and Janelle. Where we both got to look each other in the eyes and, and help each other through that moment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Dean, do you have a second question? Uh, yeah. Uh, how did you feel about working on the the second season? Because it's like uh, the same background, same kind of story, but almost different at the same time. How yeah. how did you how how do you feel about that? I loved it. I loved it. Again, you know, as as actors, we were able to uh, you know the cast was able to read the full season beforehand. So I was able to read season two almost like a movie. Um, you know, understanding the beginning, middle, and end, and the arc that was going to take place for my character. Um, you know, so it wasn't unusual in that way. I've been used to doing a lot of a lot of films. Honestly, it just felt great. It felt great to, for one, be able to come back. For two, be able to come back in the way that I believe Walter came back. You know, it's 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 almost like I I um 
was working backwards in a sense, you know, trying to uncover all the different um, little innuendos of, of who Walter is, the minutia of, of his life, you know, his interests, his past. Um, I, I got an opportunity this season to really color him and make him more of a whole character. So honestly, I was I was excited for this new season. All right, Lorenzo, do you have a second question? Yeah. So um, we're obviously all living through. Uh, oh yeah, Donna Moderna, Italy. Uh, we're obviously uh, going, uh, all of us, we're experiencing uh, challenging times and difficult times. Uh, how are you experiencing these days yourself? And what are you discovering about yourself? For some people, it's a time to, you know, revalue things in their lives and uh, prioritize different things. How are you experiencing it? Um, yeah, I think, you know, for me, I think I've tried to, to remain uh, productive creatively as, 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 as much as I can. Um, you know, whether that's building out ideas, um, you know, trying my hand at like writing, writing scripts, um, watching a lot of movies and TV shows, uh, you know, going on uh, walks when I can, um, you know, just trying to keep my creative energy um, alive. You know, I think that you know, this time we could use this time as an excuse to be really lazy and to sort of shut off our brains. But, um, you know, on the other side, you can kind of just use the time uh, for good and, and, and to see what you can come up with and what you can learn about yourself in this time. So it's really been really, really great to just be able to stay home, stay centered and grounded. Um, mind you, I'm looking forward to getting back to life as I'm sure most of the world is, uh, but definitely trying to take this time for what it's worth. Okay, great. Jonita, you're next, if you have a second question. I do. Um, Jonita Davis of the Black Cape. Um, this this one's kind of a little offbeat. My daughters were watching Degrassi High, and I thought I saw you in, in there. Uh, oh, man. Um, oh, <laughs> and so I, wonder, I just wonder what would that guy, would that guy believe that you would be co-starring first with Julia Roberts and then with Janelle Monet? What would he say? you know, if you told him that back then? <laughs> uh, wow. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I, I like to say that, that um, you know, I had the most confidence in the world at that time and I thought that anything was possible and, and a part of me did. But, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, I want to work with Julia Roberts one day. It's, it's, it's another thing to like have her sitting in front of you every single day and you're actually working with her now. And, um, and you, you, you're able to build a, a relationship that, you know, extends far past, uh, you know, work. Um, you know, I, I had, you know, Julia texted me a couple of days ago just to, to check in. She sent an old photo of us. Um, and I don't know, it was just something that was so cool. I just thought, man, you know, how many of my friends would have believed, um, you know, how many of my friends would have believed back in that Degrassi time that, you know, Julie and I, Julie and I would be on the text and 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 be so close and and, and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, I can't really say that, you know, I would have totally believed someone if they told me that it would have panned out like this. But I definitely had big goals and big dreams, and I don't think that's you know going to stop anytime soon. Thank you. Okay, great. And last one, Ravi, do you have a second question? Yes, I do. Uh, so hi, uh, uh, Ravi again from India. India, uh, my question to you is: uh, you know, the show resonated heavily with the audience because it talks about a lot of real-world issues. Uh, you know, you have done movies like uh, you know, uh, Beale Street and this show Homecoming. How do you feel? Uh, how do you feel to be a part of this push uh, in Hollywood that highlights such issues? Yeah, I mean, look, I I, uh, I don't claim to be a, a politician or an activist by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I've had an incredible opportunity in my life to to be a part of telling stories that matter, um, be a part of, of of art that reflects life and society, um, and that can in turn maybe change the world, um, and so for me, I think that that's sort of my guiding light as, as far as, you know, the roles I choose and, 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 you know, the people I choose to indulge with. Um, 
for me, I think at the core of it all, I've just been a fan of great stories. And, and whether you look at something like a Beale Street that's directed by a Barry Jenkins, and I get to say the words of a, of a, of a James Baldwin, you know, the great literary genius that is James Baldwin, I mean, that should get anyone excited, <laughs> you know? So for me, it was, it, it's a no brainer to take on things like that. It's a no brainer for me when someone says, you know, you, you get to tell a story about veterans reacclimating to civilian life. Um, oh, and by the way, Julia Roberts is gonna star opposite you. You know, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. So for me, I've just been really, really lucky to tell cool stories with really, really cool people. All right, great. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 All right, that's a cut.